8966 Overview. This is a short overview on getting started in 1099 Pro's 8966 software. In this tutorial, we will create a filer, import a file, generate an XML file, and finally package the newly created XML file with 1099 Pro's trademarked IDES Packager tool. Let's get started. Working with 8966 is as easy as 1, 2, 3. You can see that step 1 pertains to setting up your filers, step 2 relates to importing a file with 8966 data, and step 3 applies to creating the IRS IDES submission package. Let's go ahead and select My Filers List, then click on Add. Go ahead and fill in your EIN. You can look up your Global Intermediary Identification Number, GIIN, if you need to. Just right-click while your mouse is over the box. A lookup table will appear. We are going to view by name. And there we are. There's our FI, Financial Intermediary. 1099 Pro uses the latest financial intermediary list provided by the IRS at the time of the latest software update. If your FI is not present in the list, but you have registered, you can expect it to show up with the next software update. You can have multiple lines for your filer and up to 180 characters for your name field. Tab down to your address and fill it in. Similar to the name field, the address field allows for up to 180 characters. We'll make this a foreign country where the financial intermediary is coming out of. Let's pick Argentina. We do need to fill in some contact information. It is not relevant to the XML file, but we'll put in some temporary data. Press OK. We'll put in a payer code. It's a unique way of identifying the filer. If you are not familiar with the payer code, you can simply make one up. And we're going to put in a bogus foreign tin. Hit Save at the bottom of the screen. OK, now you can see we've created the filer. Go up to the top left corner of the screen and press Select Another Filer. Let's go ahead and select the filer we just added. We are going to work with that filer from this point on. Hit select at the bottom. Let's import the tax form. Under number 2, Preparing My Forms, click on Import New Tax Forms. We can import using an Excel file. We refer to them as import maps in our suite of software. The next screen tells you about the import process. Press Next when you have finished reading the screen. For this example, we will select an import map that has pooled and not pooled information. This is a built-in map if you use our particular headers in your Excel file, which you can find in the sample import folder where 8966 Professional is installed. Please refer to our video, Importing with Standard Maps, for a complete walkthrough of the import process. Read the warning screen, make sure Excel is closed before continuing, then press Proceed. In the next screen, press Browse. We are going to select a sample file that 1099 Pro comes with. We will browse for a sample folder under the Pro 66 T14 import directory. That looks good. That's the information. Filer looks good. Press Next. Let's press View Next to double check our headers match. I can scroll to the right and see that we are bringing in different records. We'll bring in the rest of the file, press Next. Let's leave our records with the default status of Pending. Press Next. I would test if I had maybe 5,000 records, but if you are only bringing in a couple hundred or less, go ahead and just hit Finish. The import process will validate all records regardless. A window will pop up telling you how many records were loaded. Press OK. For this example, press continue to post this session. If there were errors, they would show up here in the status column. It would say error, reject, or warning. This file is clean. If I had any errors, I would go ahead and bring it in anyways. I can fix them once they are loaded. Let's go ahead and post this session. For this example, we'll accept the defaults for the next two screens, then we'll press finish and yes, and we'll go see our forms. And here they are. Here's a sample form. Notice we have part two, part three, and part four. And all the information is in there. If I wanted to, I could modify the form or fix an error if I had one here. I could say, 
to first name, hit save, apply the changes to update the master list, yes, okay, so let's say our data looks good. Next we need to import our IRS transmitter information. Press file at the top left corner of the screen. Select transmitter information. To speed up the process, we have already put in some temporary information. Press OK to continue. At this point, let's create the IRS formatted XML file. Under number 3, create XML. Press XML v1.1 file. Press create an 8966 FATCA XML file. Please read the first screen and then press next. Make sure you have the most current update of our software and then click on next. The IRS requires you to have unique account numbers for all your forms. If you do not have account numbers, run the account number generator wizard on this screen. For our example, we will assume we have them and press next. We'll highlight the filer we previously created here. Press tag to select it. Now press next. Go ahead and make this an original file. You could make this a test file if you wanted to. Press Next. Make a note of the location that the software is saving the XML file to. Or if you like, change the destination folder. Press Next. The next screen displays all the transmitter information that we previously input. Looks right, so press Next. Verify all the information on this next screen and hit Finish. A window appears telling us it has created our XML file in the directory we specified. Press OK. Before you can package your XML file, you will need a digital certificate with an optional passphrase. Certificates and their related private keys are used to sign and decrypt messages between the sending party and the IRS. A digital certificate binds an identity to a public key. Certificate authorities issue certificates after an identity proofing process to verify the certificate owner. For more information about obtaining these items, we suggest you go to the bottom left-hand column and press on IRS Pubs and Links. This is a good source of information for any questions you may have about the 8966 form. Highlight IDES Publication 5190, then press View the Selected Form. The IDES User Guide will pop up in PDF format. This is a good place to start. If we go to the second page, we can see the table of contents. You can see page 17 tells you how to obtain a digital certificate. Let's go back to our home page. Now, under the number 3 in the left column, select IDES Packager. We are going to take that file and package it per the IDES specifications. A window appears asking for our information. This assumes we have our digital certificate and passphrase. The first field asks for our XML file. Remember, we saved our file to the MAG files folder. We'll browse to it and select it. Next, we will browse to our digital certificate and select it. We have our passphrase. We will accept the default directory, so let's click on the Create button. A window will appear. Make note of what it is called and what directory it is going to save to. Press Save. Great! We are done! The package file is ready to submit to the IRS. It's that easy to work with our software. Thank you.